under construction or if that was something that um, was a full structure before. This, that may have been something that was under construction. We certainly hope that was the case and not a finished product that, uh, that the uh, storm just did that to. But this is out of the Nicholasville area of Jessamine County. And that would have been likely to produce that kind of damage. You're talking about hurricane force winds, 70 plus, at, at least. And uh, you know that's what the uh, that's what the forecast for today called for those 70 plus mile per hour winds. So if you're downstream of this line of thunderstorms, now you need to be taking shelter immediately. So, and again, I know you're you're looking at this map. You're thinking, okay, where are the tornado warnings? The 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 Weather Service today has had all kinds of issues from last night through this morning. It, it's, a, it's a nationwide shortage. It's a nationwide outage that they've been dealing with. They've lost radar from time to time. It's a terrible, terrible day for that to happen. We've been losing uh, some communication uh, from this. But again, that tornado warning continues in effect for Moorhead, campus of Moorhead State University. Would imagine the uh, kiddos are in their, in their storm shelters right now. And then if you're watching us right now, Menifee County, Wolf County, Morgan County especially, do me a solid and seek your safe place immediately. We always tell you no matter what, we're going to cover our heads because most Injuries, most fatalities during severe weather, wind, tornadoes, what have you, occurs from flying debris. And that's something that, that we can at least take a uh, preventive step, preventive measures ahead of time. And, you know, Jim, like what we were saying a little bit ago, every time this line of storms pulses down, all of a sudden it pulses right back up. It, it, that's what's happening I out mean, there. You're, you're seeing the lightning increasing yet again. It went away. It you went know, away. Some of it. And now yeah. it's starting to flare back up again. And, and I'm going to try to, I'm going to hand draw some warnings here, Chris, so people can see the, the warned areas. I'm, I'm going to get a, a map of those and I'm going to try to uh, let people see uh, those because it's easier to resonate with a, a, a map. So uh, I'm going to back this radar data up here for you really quickly. And now I'm going to show you, I'm just going to plot a couple of uh, markers uh, mm -hmm. on here so people can see where the warned areas uh, are showing up. Uh, and we have several different warned areas uh, that are included in on this. So I'm just trying to get all the data pulled up here, friends. Give me just a second because... Uh, I, and while Jim's doing that, we can, uh, uh, we can pull up some more pictures. I just got a new picture as well out of Nicholasville. And this is uh, down wires... Um, I-75 Athens Boonesboro, so we've got wires down there across the um, across the road. WBON reporting that, and with that picture, courtesy of them, and you can see how obviously that is going to have a major impact on traffic. That is the northbound lane that we're looking at that is backed up. Uh, India tells me so. Yeah, that is a major, major backup because of the of the wires that are down across uh, the interstate. I got another picture out of Nicholasville just a second ago, and. Jim right now is showing where the tornado warnings are uh, in a rough in, in a rough area. Those are the areas that are currently under those tornado warnings. Yeah, best way we can do it right now until we get to access to the full stream of data again. But what we're looking at here is uh, parts of uh, Bath County. You get into uh, Montgomery County, uh, the back edge of that warning is also in there, uh, Rowan County included. And, and then you've got the, the warning also in uh, Morgan County that it continues uh, in all of those areas. That's where we have the tornado warning. So, so again, I, I know it's a little hodgepodge of me just making little circles on the map, but that's what we've got. It's a data disruption from our uh, parent company or the weather company, the parent company of our data. It's not an in-house issue. It's uh, this is happening at uh, other stations uh, across the country as well, Chris. But uh, it's yeah, it is. And uh, uh, like we said, a really, really terrible time for um, for a data outage from. Uh, NOAA, but that's what we're dealing with as of right now, so we're making the best of, of what we have got. At one point last night, this morning, all the radars across the country were down. There was no data that was uh, coming out of those. But here's our line of severe thunderstorms with possible tornadoes embedded within this line that continues to make its way into eastern Kentucky. So you've got about 10 minutes here into West Liberty. Obviously, when we were talking tornado warning, West Liberty, we know what comes to mind. We go back in our heads, all of a sudden it's March 2nd, 2012. This isn't that same type of a setup right now, but you know what? It doesn't take that same type of a setup to produce some damage or to cause some issues. We're seeing that across the region now. Even if we don't get a tornado with this, chances are we're going to get winds, hurricane force winds with this line, 70 to 75 miles an hour, if not greater. 
because some of the pictures we've been getting, and I think we have another damaged uh, picture out of Nicholasville, which appears to uh, part of Nicholasville in Jessamine County. I just took it on the chin a little bit ago. It's a, uh, it's a picture. It's a little small, but uh, you can see some damage in there that is showing up. And, uh, and again, Jim, similar to the, the pictures we were looking at just a little bit ago out of this same, same area. You know, and, and thinking back to that picture that we looked at out of uh, Jessamine County a little bit earlier, those were still beams that mm -hmm. are extremely heavy. That's right. They were exposed uh, because it looked like it was uh, some kind of new construction, but it, it takes a lot to move those. Uh, and you had some winds at that time estimated around 70 miles per hour or, or higher. So, again, as you say, uh, right. right around hurricane force stuff, that, that's kind of uh, atmosphere. Yeah, we're going to go back in and we're going to look at what we're dealing with as of right now, Jim. We'll stop this. We're going to check on the uh, spins that are showing up within this line and now into uh, Menifee County. We, we're likely dealing with two spins. One now to the southeast of Moorhead. That looks like it is just to the Ooh. east of 519. That's a pretty good little, uh, uh, yeah, a, a pretty good indention there that we're seeing. So uh, I'm surprised the Weather Service has not extended that tornado warning uh, farther to the south and southeast. So we're looking at this. Here's Moorhead. This is 519. This will be heading over toward Elliott County here very, very shortly. May clip uh, far northern part of uh, Morgan County. But this is in a squall line of thunderstorms. There's the community of Hamlin. Here is Moorhead right here, Interstate 64, just to the north of this. This is southeastern parts of Rowan County. This blew through Moorhead just a little bit ago. And uh, we had that tornado warning that continues to make its way through. But, Jim, you look at that. We're seeing the winds that are coming in one direction in the red. And then all of a sudden we're getting that, uh, that couplet to show up, winds that are going in the opposite direction. So if we are getting a tornado, and just to be honest with you, folks, there's a pretty good chance this is spitting out a tornado right now in the southeastern parts of Rowan County. That is going to continue to make its way to the east and the southeast and be on top of northern sections of Morgan County and into Elliott County. So if you got some friends, you got some family in the northeastern parts of Morgan and Elliott County, southeastern Rowan County, hey, give them a call right now. Uh, check on them, make sure they are aware that we have this possible tornado that is making its way across southeastern parts of Rowan County. Farther to the southwest, that uh, other little spin that we've been uh, dealing with out of Menifee County, just keeps on doing its thing as well. This would be, by the way, the uh, Zilpo Recreation Area. Cave Run Lake is right here. Uh, this is 519. Here is the possible tornado between Elliottville and the Craney community. That is heading toward far northern sections of uh, Morgan County. So folks up around the Wrigley area, got to keep a close eye on that. Uh, this would be Route 7 that connects West Liberty to Sandy Hook. Not as strong. But it is still a pretty good signature that we're getting winds that are coming in one direction and then they're coming right back around southeast of Frenchburg. This is 460 uh, that we're dealing with here that uh, runs out of Frenchburg toward Morgan County. So Morgan County, we've got two spins that we're dealing with. One that may clip the far northern side of town heading towards Sandy Hook and the other coming out of Frenchburg that is very close now to the Morgan County line coming out of Menifee County. All right, Chris. So, so uh, this line continues to do its thing. Okay, here's what's happened. A again, and we're not getting the data. We're getting it from another side. But Sandy Hook now in, in the middle of a tornado warning. The okay. tornado warning that we're looking at that uh, is in southern parts of Rowan County is now projected to pass through north and eastern sections mm -hmm. of... Morgan County and through Johnson yeah. County. Yep. There's a new warning that goes all the way out through there, Chris. So our warning for this likely tornado, at this point we just we got to call this a likely tornado in the southern Rowan County, goes on the southern edge right through here, does not include McGoffin, but it goes through uh, West Liberty to Paintsville and then to the north. It does not include Lawrence County because Lawrence County is under a different National Weather Service jurisdiction. I know it's all kind of uh, jacked up when you're talking about that stuff, but uh, they may, uh, Charleston is under, or controls Lawrence County, Carter County, and Du Bois and Greenup. They may have to get the uh, western part of Lawrence County in, but this spin that is a likely tornado is likely to pass between Sandy Hook and West Liberty and heading toward maybe Flat Gap and Paintsville into Johnson County. And then the other uh, possible tornado is coming out of the Frenchburg area on top of 460, crossing into western parts of Morgan County. So Morgan County, we are under two separate tornado warnings 
as of right now. One for this cell uh, coming out of southeastern parts of Rowan County and the other for this cell that is coming out of the Frenchburg area rolling into the west side of Morgan County as we speak. And it is all within a squall line of thunderstorms where you typically don't see a lot of tornadoes. But, uh, you know, the damage we've been seeing, Jim, through central Kentucky, even areas where we did not have tornado warnings, when I look at some of those damage pictures we're getting, chances are we had a brief tornado touchdown, a hit and run, maybe 30 seconds or a minute's worth, of a tornado touching down and then right back up in the clouds. It was, a, it was enough to, to cause the damage that we saw because the, those were pretty intense uh, at the time. And, and again, I'm looking, uh, locking in on this one in far western sections of uh, Morgan County. That's the, the other warning. There are two warnings, like you That's said. Right. There's the, the southern one, and you can see that notch, Chris. Uh, it's uh, pretty intense coming out of Menifee County going over into Morgan County right now, about to cross the border. That's where we find the, the circulation. I'll pop my arrow up there for you so you you all can uh, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This this area here, we're getting that circulation, that spin, so it's crossing the border. It's uh, just north of Palmer uh, that, that That's where it is, Palmer and uh, headed right into uh, Morgan County uh, at this time. So it's about to clear uh, far eastern sections of Menifee. So we're watching that happen. Now I'm going to zoom it back out, and we're going to go up here and look at this other warned storm. Again, you're not seeing the, the true warned data, but we are certainly under a warning. And you, I'm going to peek inside this one as well to give you, uh, and so I can find where the spin might be. Look at how, look, before I, I even look at that, look, look at how well defined that line is right there with the, the strong wind, Chris, going from the red yeah. to the green. Mm -hmm. So even if there's not a tornado, and we likely think there is. Yeah, you're getting wind damage. Some, some serious wind all lined up uh, in that area, at least. 50, 60, 70 miles per hour at the least. That's what we're thinking uh, with the, the overall setup with that. So that's what we're watching, and that's in the, the northern portions of uh, Morgan County, and, and all really all throughout, but you've got that notch up there at the north, too. Right here. This is what Jim's talking about. So here's the community of Wrigley. Uh, that is in the northeastern parts of Morgan County. Here is our possible tornado right here, and then we're almost seeing another little kink that is developing here to the southwest of 519. So anytime we've got a line of thunderstorms like this, if the environment is favorable on the leading edge of that, you can get some quick spin-ups of weak tornadoes. doesn't matter if it's considered a weak tornado. A weak tornado can still produce 100-mile-an-hour winds or a little greater, which can cause substantial damage, but that is uh, what we've been watching with this. Now, this signature is still there right on top of the... This is Rowan County. Here is Morgan County. Here is Elliott County. And this is Sandy Hook. West Liberty would be down here. And then to the north, 519, that's the road that connects West Liberty to the city of Moorhead. New scan goes through, and you can still see there's almost a little kink here, a little kink here, one right on 519, and then another one that is coming into far western parts of Morgan County out of Menifee County. You look at that, and any one of those small little kinks or indentions in that line Let's go back in on this one, Jim. Uh, it could be producing a quick uh, tornado spin-up. But I, I look at that. That uh, is uh, just to the north of the Mountain Parkway here. And right on top of 460, here's the Grassy Creek area, Woods Bend, and then back into the line. The yeah, there you go. That was the one that, when you zoomed out. That caught my attention. Very possible this is a tornado. Uh, that is heading right along 460. This is what we were looking at into Menifee County. We started to see this couplet forming into Montgomery County. And it, for the most part, has been hugging 460, coming out of Mount Sterling toward Menifee County and now into Morgan County. So do me a solid, if you are watching us right now, from Woods Bend down to Grassy Creek and over toward the Stacy Fork area, find your storm shelter. This is a possible tornado that is coming at us here into the western part of Morgan County. And, uh, and a, you know, Jim, we see these spins. All of a sudden, they get really, really stout. They lose, a little, uh, they lose a little energy, and then they tighten right back up. This is really tightened up. This is 460, which is a heavily traveled road coming out of West Liberty and into Menifee County. And if we are getting a tornado, it is right in here. And those are some... You know, this may be the best signature we've had so far on the day. This may be a little better than what we were seeing a, a few minutes ago into Rowan County. So uh, some of the areas that are really under the gun are essentially right on top of 460. And uh, that signature, Jim, is, is stout. 
Uh, very, unfortunately, very impressive for uh, the type situation that we are, are dealing with uh, out there right now. I know that uh, we're, we're talking about this particular situation, but we've got uh, several live areas uh, here in Lexington, too, Chris, where, that have mm -hmm. received damage, and we have access to some of those shots. So uh, we can kind of put up some of that information and some of the, the live reports and live data that we have out there for Fayette County uh, to show what's happened here. Because, you know, we had... Uh, estimated 70 plus miles per hour winds yeah. go through here a little mm -hmm. earlier as well and as we saw in Nicholasville so now we're starting to piece things together uh, lucky for us we had uh, lucky for us it was during the daytime hours unlucky that it happened but at, at least we were able to uh, kind of monitor and watch the situation a little bit closer so we're going to get to some of those reports we've got all kinds of uh, information that we are tracking uh, out there uh, for you and we'll continue to do so yeah and you know we're watching that uh, what Jim is showing you as of right now, south uh, west of Woods Bend, the Grassy Creek area. I, this is going to be skirting very quickly across the southern part of uh, Morgan County. Uh, so, West Liberty, uh, it, it looks like the spins are kind of splitting West Liberty. One is to the northeast of us, the other is just to the southeast of us. So, here's West Liberty. One spin is up uh, north of Wrigley, the other is right here. This is heading more toward the southeast if you're around Cannell City. Northern parts of McGoffin County, got to really keep an eye on that. You don't have that warning that has been extended with this particular part of the cell just yet. That may be changing here very, very quickly. And again, you're, if you're joining us, our weather provider, the National Weather Service, having some uh, data feed issues today. We, at times last night, uh, much of the country was without radar, much of the country without getting warnings right now, at least for uh, to show on air. We're still getting those, but uh, the system just is not plotting those as we speak. So we're just verbally throwing it out and showing you exactly where the possible tornadoes are. And again, that would be to the southwest of West Liberty. Now, the new scan that went through there, this thing kind of broadened out just a little bit. It's not as tight of a rotation as what we had a little bit ago. And uh, the same goes for that cell that is crossing out of northern parts of Morgan County and into southwestern parts of Elliott County. But overall, we're still seeing those kinks within that line, and all it takes is that quick little spin-up that uh, produces a tornado. doesn't have to be on the ground for uh, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 5 minutes. 30 seconds, it can produce some uh, significant wind damage. And I suspect, Jim, in looking at uh, some of the pictures we're getting out of central Kentucky, what has happened is that this line, as it made its way through, put down some quick hit and run, very weak tornadoes that may not have been on the ground for more than a minute or so. Yeah, I mean, you're talking maybe a couple hundred yards that, that yeah. they were down. So uh, maybe a few football fields that they, they lived and, and traveled. So Chris was talking about damage. Our Alexa Minton is in Lexington, and they have a live look of what's happening at Old Frankfurt Pike. This is video from up there, Chris, and you can see they cleared the tree out of the road. But uh, you can see that's that's completely uprooted right there. That, Look at that, that. Yeah, that one is. We're being told there's another tree that is just down the road from this that is uh, is now is leaned over on power lines. The power lines caught it essentially. So. so here's here's what to think about this. You see what's happening here with this video. That what's happening in Lexington, and you can see them. Yeah, he's getting a zoomed in shot. On oh, there the, you go. You can see that laying on the lines. Tree there. on the lines. So this happened here. You're going to see even more than that uh, out there in eastern Kentucky because they're, they're facing some of the same winds, if not stronger now. Uh, that, that's what a lot of folks are experiencing, and I know we have numerous power outages already. We're about 23,000 customers without power. Uh, Fayette County, we have almost 12,000 customers without power. Into Jessamine County, uh, 2,500. And now we're, we're starting to really see the numbers uh, coming in out of Bath County, out of Fleming County, out of Rowan County from that possible tornado that made its way through those areas uh, a little bit ago. And, that, uh, and again, the, uh, the damage reports will just start to trickle in from eastern Kentucky now that those storms are, are making their way through the populated areas. So again, if you're in West Liberty, you're getting in on some big time winds but the spin with this is likely just to our south and southwest. But they're all, if we go in on West Liberty, Jim, I'm going to show how there's almost a little teeny tiny couplet that is trying to uh, develop here just to the south of the city of West Liberty. And we'll zoom in on this 
uh, into Morgan County right now because we are under two separate tornado warnings into Morgan County. Here's Woods Bend, Grassy Creek. Here is the West Liberty. Now we'll look inside this storm. You're getting the worst of the weather right now into West Liberty. You're watching us and you're like, yeah, we're, it, it is. So there's almost a little bit of a couplet trying to develop here, but this would be more straight line winds. Boy, you go uh, from one extreme to the other with the winds that are changing direction very quickly, but 60 plus miles per hour with those winds right now into parts of Morgan County. And uh, here's a little bit of an uptick in the winds between Woods Bend, Grassy Creek that is on top of 460, and that is going to continue to make its way very quickly toward the east. But Jim, we've said this a couple times. This line weakens, and then it ramps right back up five or ten minutes later. That's a, and that's what's been happening with this right. so far. For two hours now. What's happening now, we're in a weakening mode. Is that going to continue? Let's hope so. But the, the history of this line says... You can't let your guard down because it can flex very quickly yet again. Uh, th that's right. And, and India's over here, uh, Chris. She's got some information that uh, she's been talking about mm -hmm. with uh, she's about uh, traffic issues here in the city. I, I know that we've been running into to quite a bit of that too, yes, right? We have. And if you are taking, uh, I want to be able to show uh, if we can take one of the traffic maps. We are dealing with several issues out there on the roadways from I-75. This is a look at Clay's Ferry. Now, just north of that. We are dealing with uh, not only a crash, but power lines on the highway that has the entire highway shut down in both directions. So right now I am zooming closer into I-75 right near Athens, Boonesboro, and you can definitely see that area where we are currently closed in both directions. If you have to travel in this area, many people are taking Athens, Boonesboro to get around this closure or even taking Old Richmond Road to get around. But unfortunately, we are still experiencing some of that heavier volume in in addition to that, I'm going to quickly show you also Lee's Town and Citation causing some problems as well. We have some areas where we have trees and power lines shut down. And so right now, if you are traveling anywhere near Lee's Town and New Circle, you really want to take it slow and give yourself some extra time and also find an alternate route. But I-75 in several areas already shut down because we have power lines that are completely blocking the roadways. All right, so just to kind of summarize the, the situation out there, it's a mess, Chris, and this season, this isn't even the end of it. Yeah, that, no. That's the thing. It, it's not. And we go back to uh, our uh, radar box here, and, you know, we're looking at this line, and, Jim, there is a real possibility that we've had multiple tornadoes along this line, and it still has the potential to produce some tornadoes, and, I, and I'm looking at this little bit of a hot spot in the wind southwest of West Liberty. Grassy Creek, this just made its way through there and now is into the uh, southern part of Morgan County. I'm a little surprised they haven't extended that tornado warning, at least as of now, into northern parts of McGoffin County because that is a uh, part of this line that is working its way toward Cannell City and eventually will cross uh, into northern parts of McGoffin County right on top of 460. But here's our line. And within this, we've been watching for little spin-ups of tornadoes. Doesn't take a major EF3, EF4, or 5 tornado to cause some damage. It takes these quick spin-ups. They may be on the ground for 30 seconds to a minute, and then those things are gone. But in that time span, as Jim said, they may, it may only affect a football field worth of real estate. But um, that's, you know, what we're dealing with. And uh, you're highlighting this area, Jim. For, that's a severe thunderstorm warning. That's what exists okay. for the folks right there. So there's no tornado warning out, but there is a severe thunderstorm warning drawn by hand there. Okay, good deal. And uh, this is, uh, does include parts of Morgan County into McGoffin County and across sections of, I believe, Wolf County there. That'll take us for probably the next half hour or so. And they elected to not extend that uh, tornado warning and just place the severe thunderstorm warning out there because we are seeing that line that has slowly weakened just over the past few minutes. But it has weakened before, and then it started to flex and spin up a couple of different tornadoes. So that's the concern right now. So if you're watching us here into Morgan County, into uh, Elliott County, over toward Johnson County, northern McGoffin County, parts of Wolf County, don't let your guard down until we get this line fully through here. Because even if it's not producing tornadoes, chances are this thing is going to be spitting out winds of 70 miles an hour or better. And, you know, that is, that is certainly 
the concern, Jim, as we, uh, as we roll forward and go through the next few hours with the wind damage with this particular line. So that severe thunderstorm warning has been expanded to include parts of Salyersville. Uh, the tornado warning continues for the eastern part of Morgan County and into sections of Johnson County. And then south of West Liberty, that cell may still have some uh, weak rotation with it, but overall it is zipping its way out of Morgan County in the next few minutes and ready to cross into McGoffin County, and likely some wind damage with that still. Have you noticed how, you know, the lightning's gone down again? This is what we keep mm -hmm. talking about, how the, it continues to go up and down yeah. as far as intensity is concerned. You so, know, you, you typically will see some thunderstorms that will pulse up and pulse, pulse down. You mm -hmm. don't see a whole line that does it. Right, and that's what's been happening, yeah. which is very unique, very strange. Uh, we're getting reports now from Lexington that uh, because of some issues here, Chris, two mm -hmm. houses caught fire. We have our Kelsey Soto mm -hmm. that is out there right now, and uh, she's got more information on, on exactly what's happening. So, uh, Kelsey, uh, explain uh, what you've got out there. Hey guys, it still smells pretty smoky out here. We're on Buckhorn Drive. Uh, just talked to the fire department who told us that they actually got a call after a lightning strike had knocked down this power line. We'll show you here in a second. And it then caught two separate houses across the street from each other on fire. That fire was mostly contained to the attics. Um, and actually, when the fire department got here on scene, one of their ladder trucks was trapped underneath the wires. So they did suffer some minor damage there. There was also a Lextran bus who was transporting passengers. Um, thankfully, no injuries. They had to get them all off the bus, of course, and that bus is stuck here right now as the scene is not yet clear. Um, firefighters say it's going to be a busy day, and so they're just trying to allocate their resources and plan and okay. prep for the day. There was a fire investigator on scene here. And uh, he actually had to leave because there's another incident there on Ironworks Pike. So it's KU's on scene as well. Um, so it's it's a doozy for sure. Okay, and and there you see uh, power pole down. Uh, you know, sparking a fire. So a couple of homes catching fire. Buckhorn Drive. That is the scene right now in Lexington, and we continue to see all kinds of issues with this line of thunderstorms that is making its way through. Lexington, listen, this is the line that caused the damage, caused the wind damage into Anderson County, Woodford County, Jessamine County, just to name a few. I'm getting uh, now pictures and videos coming in out of eastern Kentucky, but it, we said this was kind of taking on that bow segment, uh, kind of the entire line, and man, it is really still making its way into eastern Kentucky, but it is coming down just a little bit in terms of intensity, but we can't let our guard down because you get these quick little spin-ups uh, out of this. But that storm is making its way now into southeastern parts of Morgan County, where we have had two tornado warnings for two different cells into Morgan County. We can show you some video out of the West Liberty area, I believe, from just a little bit ago. This uh, from uh, what we're dealing with. This may be out of Woods Bend um, in Morgan County, but that is um, as that uh, tornadic super or that tornadic uh, part of the storm was passing its way through the Woods Bend area and just to the southwest of West Liberty, and uh, you know likely seeing some wind damage reports that are going to be trickling in out of this out of. Morgan County, out of Menifee County. I just got some pictures out of Menifee County. But yeah, this is uh, from my buddy Chris Trusty down there in uh, Woods Bend. So you can see what we are dealing with with that line of thunderstorms that made its way through, may have had a little weak rotation, and that's uh, some video that we're dealing with. But this line now stretches from Ashland through areas across US 23, just west of Louisa, now between West Liberty, Sayersville, and Paintsville, and the back edge of this is weakening a little bit. Interesting to note, strong thunderstorm going up around Stanton into Powell County. And Jim, if we can just look within this line yet again to see how many little spins that are currently showing up, because we've had several of those throughout the morning, it likely... Is, uh, is losing a little bit of steam. Now, this is really, really close to the National Weather Service down in Jackson. So we're getting a great view. And I look at this, and I'm not seeing the true kinks, if you will, within that line, Jim, to suggest we're getting spin-ups right now. Right. That can change. But as of now, we're not seeing that signature. It's still on the leading edge of it. We're, we're pushing out winds, Chris, that are still around... 
50, 60 miles per hour. So right. you have that on the, that extent. But, but again, you, you get one of these stronger ones and we can spin something up. You, you're right. Yeah. But it's just not as prevalent as it once was with those little notches you're talking about. 